Over all the years that I've been using Blender, I've came up with lots of different techniques to add a little bit of extra realism to my materials. So in this video, I just want to go through four or five of my favorite tips that will hopefully help you to bring your materials to the next level. I was recently working on a kitchen scene for the new module of my interior masterclass course and right at the end I made this asset which is like a family notice board. I thought it looked really good apart from the scale on this cork texture which was just really ridiculously massive. So I tried just changing the scale over here by tiling everything but the problem that you get which you often get with uh, seamless textures is they're not quite as seamless as you think and you can see this obvious repeating pattern right you can see this all the way over it and i think it looks really bad there's multiple fancy node setup solutions to try and fix this sort of repeating texture problem but the solution i like to use is literally one node if we get a voronoi texture and we plug the uv into the vector and then take a look at the color output. You can see what this basically does is it just splits everything up into different colored cells. Now, because we're using vector information here and we have three different color channels, colors can basically mean vectors in Blender. So what's gonna happen if we plug this color into the location is it's gonna kind of take our original image, it's gonna chop it up randomly based on this distribution and then we're going to get something like this where we have much less obvious tiling and we could change the scale on this i'll just show you this in material preview mode we can change the scale on this and you can see we go from having all this repetition to suddenly it just gets more and more cut up now if you will have some seams on there but usually as soon as you stop moving this they're basically invisible there's just too much noise in this sort of texture for you to see it if you can see it a little bit, sometimes turning up the detail value, which will kind of just merge everything together. You can also try changing this to one of the other modes as well. This next tip is something I discovered accidentally about a year ago, and it's really changed the way that I work on small details. So when we're making stuff in 3D, it's very common for us to make an object like this just out of individual pieces. It's a lot easier to just duplicate a couple of these cubes than what it is to put cuts onto here and manually sort of extrude these pieces out but the problem we have is you get these really harsh intersection points and we can't actually put like some sort of bevel or anything on them because the pieces are not connected so of course we have this bevel node these days which i absolutely love and if you just plug this into the normal of the material these all have the same material we can turn the radius down and that just finds all of the edges and it basically smooths them off. But the problem is it actually makes this effect stand out even more. You can clearly see around here that we have this very sharp edge with no bevel. But what I've just found out about recently is if you have separate pieces, but they're actually joined together into one object, which you can do with Control J, then Blender will actually apply this bevel to any intersection points, even though they're not part of the same mesh. I've been making a lot of landscapes recently and I keep running into the same problem. The textures that look good at a distance don't hold up at all when the camera gets close because they don't have the resolution. Whereas textures that look good up close, which are usually uh, sort of tileable PBR textures of grass, let's say, look terrible if you apply them to an entire hillside because it's just far too repetitive. So what we need is a way to kind of mix between two different materials that are similar. So obviously you could paint out a mask that would define which one goes where, but that wouldn't follow the camera. And it means you would have to actually know where exactly the camera position needs to be. I want something much more procedural than that, which is actually quite easy to do. So I have the original texture up here and down here we have a higher resolution texture. I have just had to give this its own UV map, but don't worry about that. It's just because I'm using a 3D scan and it didn't have a proper UV map. So I'm going to add in a mix shader node. I'm going to get the original texture, this one. I'm going to plug this into the bottom. And then I'm going to plug the new texture into the top. And obviously that will just kind of mix between the two of them. We want to define this mix based on the distance from our view. So we actually have this node called camera data, which a lot of people I imagine probably never used. And it has view distance. Now, if we plug this straight into the factor, nothing's probably going to really happen. Yeah, we just kind of get the same flat texture, but let's add in a math node. 
and set this to multiply. Now I'm going to hold down shift, which gives me finer control. And I'm just going to start dragging this and you'll see the gradient comes in and we now have the two textures blended together. Now what I like to do with this is go a little bit further than I normally would, maybe to here. And then I add in a color ramp. I'm going to set this to ease, which will give us a nice gradual sort of change. And then we can start dialing this in exactly as we like it. Right, so I think something like this. Now, the cool thing about this technique is because it's based on the camera position, as the camera moves around, it will actually continually give you this nice high resolution uh, image, no matter where you move with the camera. Now, of course, the problem with that is it's going to also cover things like rocks. But I find as long as you don't move the camera too quickly, and especially if you have you know trees and grass and things and vegetation in the scene to cover it a bit, most of the time, people aren't going to notice. Unless the camera's moving really quick or it's very different textures, things like this, you might notice it where the rock kind of disappears. But for the most part, I don't think people are going to tell. Certainly for still renders, it works great. One of the things that always makes CGI look a little bit fake is the fact that there's no transition between materials. In real life, you would expect there to be dust and dirt to build up in between the road and these tiles and in between the tiles and the walls, but we don't have any of that here. But we can actually add that very easily. If we add the ambient occlusion node, what this basically does is it looks for surfaces that are kind of almost touching and it gives us an output based on that. So if we put this into a color ramp node, I'm actually just gonna swap these around. You can see here that basically we have this sort of white line that goes around all the surfaces that are almost touching another surface, right? So something like this, and we can just dial this in. I'm also gonna change the distance to maybe 0.4. And I'm just gonna keep playing with this until I'm happy with it. Maybe something like this. Uh, you don't want inside on for this and you don't want only local either. You want it to be affected by other objects. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a mix color. And I'm going to put this in between the diffuse texture and the principal node. This color ramp I'm going to put into the factor, which will give us something like this. And I'm going to change this to a dark color. And I'm going to change the mode to overlay. All right, now if we preview this, what we should have is a kind of dark area that goes around the perimeter right we can just really push that so you can see it i'm gonna go a little bit further than i actually would with it in real life so you can get something like this and the cool thing about this technique is we can grab these and press ctrl g which will put them into their own group let's just call this dirt and then we can select any other texture like this one and we can go for group dirt and it will automatically add it to that material and it's very simple just to find all the materials in the scene where you think it needs it and drop these in and i think it just does a much better job of sort of smoothing out the transition between materials now one thing to be uh, wary of here is any objects in your scene are going to get this so even though this cat has obviously not been there for very long it's got a lot of this dirt build up next to it also, if a character's moving through a scene, it will actually cast this as it moves. The way that you can fix that, if that's going to be a problem, is to just bake it out into a texture. A great way to add a little bit of extra realism to close-up scenes like this is to add a bit of dust. Now, the main method for making dust hasn't really changed a lot in the last few years, but one thing that we do have recently is this new sheen output which is kind of similar to something we had before, but not exactly. So I'm going to add some dust to this barrel over here. And if we turn up the weight on this, you can see that it adds what looks kind of like a layer of dust to everything. Uh, the problem that we have here, though, is that in real life, you would expect more dust to collect on the top, whereas at the moment, it's pretty evenly spread. I know it looks like there's more on the top, but that's just because of the lighting on this. If we turn this to the side, you'll see that actually you're getting the same amount everywhere else. So we can turn this roughness up and I'm just going to try and match like the sort of color of dust. So it's this slightly sort of browny gray color, something like this. 
So what we need is a system where we can distribute this firstly just on the top. So if we've got the texture coordinates, we have this normal output. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put this into a separate color node. Now if we take a look at these outputs, you can see that the normal of the object is split up into a red channel, which covers uh, everything facing in this direction. In world space, we have a green channel, which is going in this direction. And we have a blue channel which is going in this direction, up and down. Now that's the one we want. So we've already made a basic mask here, which we can just plug this blue into the weight of the sheen. And we now have a basic mask. Now the problem is we only have dust on the top. That's not how dust behaves either. Uh, also, it's just a completely uniform dust. There's no other information going on here. So what I'm gonna do is add in a noise texture. And you can use an image texture if you have an object which is unwrapped you want to use a dust texture you can do that but i like to use just a noise texture right which looks something like this i'm going to turn the scale down a little bit i'm going to turn up the detail and i'm going to turn up the roughness and i'm going to get a mix color node i'm going to plug the blue into the a slot and i'm going to put this noise into the factor and if we take a look at that, you can see that we still mostly have the top almost completely covered. But now we also have some dust on the side. And we can change how much of this is visible by changing this color here. So I think I want it probably something like this. Now, back in the day, we used to have to fake the Fresnel effect because dust is more visible when you see it from the side than when you see it directly on. We don't really need to do that anymore in uh, Sheen. It kind of already covers that. So you can see here that if we look straight from the top, there's less dust than there is uh, if we look from the side. But you can also see now we have this noise pattern in the top and we can play around with the scale on this and we can change the visibility on the side here. So let's make this a bit more visible, something like this. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we can do is obviously just grab these nodes here and use control G, call this dust. And if we copy this color, then I can select any items over here. Just paste that color. Find the node group we just made. Connect up the weight with the normal. Plug that in and we can easily add dust to all of these items. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know some of your favorite shader tips in the comments section. And remember to check out that link in the description for my Gumroad where you can save 40% on both of my courses until Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern time.